Namaste. Good morning, everyone. My name is Cassandra, and in this morning yoga class, we are going to put a lot of emphasis on stretching out our hips. So really working the lower body to improve flexibility and mobility. I would say this class is most suitable for intermediate students, but I will be giving a lot of different modifications and options. So if you're a beginner, you can definitely still give this one a try. You might just need to modify a few things. No props are required for this practice, and we are going to begin laying down on our backs. And we'll begin with a variation of our happy baby pose. So making it a little easier just for these first few breaths, just widen your knees towards your shoulders and armpits and drag them down towards the floor. So checking in to see what it feels like through the inner thighs, where you feel any tightness or tension. As much as possible, relax your shoulders, relax your head and your neck just using a little bit of arm strength. And whenever we do deep stretches, it can be really easy to forget about our breathing. So as much as possible, I want you to maintain slow, steady breaths in and out through your nose, no matter how intense the poses might get. So you might choose to stay here. You can take your full happy baby pose, Ananda Balasana, holding onto your big toes with your two piece fingers. Try to keep your elbows to the insides of the knees as you push them open a little bit wider while still dragging and pulling the thighs down. Notice if your hips are lifting off the floor, try to press your tailbone into your mat. So just getting a little bit deeper into this one. And you can even choose to alternate here by seeing if you can straighten one leg and then straightening the other. And so as we increase the intensity of this pose, always come back to your breath. Imagine you can send your breath all the way down into your hips, into your legs, wherever you're feeling this the most. So the more you're able to breathe deeply, the easier it will be to find some comfort in these poses. So just about two more breaths here. Whichever variation of this you're doing at home. And now go ahead and cross your right ankle over the top of your left knee. You want to feel that right knee move away from you as you pull that left knee and thigh in towards your belly. This is your reclined pigeon pose. So targeting more towards the outer hip and outer glute, relax your shoulders. This is option one. Those of you who would like to take this even further can straighten the left leg and now hold on to the back of that leg wherever is appropriate for you here to also get a big hamstring stretch. And I like to just flex and point through the left foot. This will help bring a little bit more sensation through the calf, through the ankle. And again, always coming back to your breath. I don't mean to be a broken record about this. It just really does help to make a big difference. And if your left leg was straight, go ahead and bend that left knee and now over cross completely. So you have your right thigh stacked over your left. One knee is over the other and see if you can reach and hold on to whatever you can grab. And you're trying to move your heels away from one another while also pulling them down. So your reclined shoelace pose. And I like to rock a little bit side to side. One more full deep breath. And release, uncross, just reach your arms up overhead, straighten your legs, just letting go here. And we'll move into our reclined pigeon on the second side. So this time left ankle crosses over your right knee and start to pull your right thigh in towards your belly. Hold on to whatever is appropriate for you here. And it's almost as if 
an invisible hand is pushing your left thigh away from you. And I like to flex my left foot. And you might choose to stay here or to also add a hamstring stretch by straightening the right leg, maybe reaching up a little higher with your hands. And you can flex and point with your right foot here as well. Let's go ahead and bend that right knee over cross, recline shoelace so your left thigh crosses over the right. Try to get one knee over the other, hold on to your shins, your ankles, your feet, and try to move your feet away from one another as you drag them down. So your arms are going to work a little bit here, but try not to clench your jaw or to tighten up through your neck. Maybe add that little rocking motion, swaying side to side a little. And let's release one last time. Reach your arms up overhead. Extend out long through your legs. And we'll meet in our tabletop pose on hands and knees so you can rock and lift up. Palms under your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Spread your fingertips nice and wide here and see if you can push into your fingertips and knuckles. Just cat and cow as you inhale, drop your belly, lift your gaze. Exhale, round and contract. Let's add on as you inhale, drop the belly, lift the gaze and also kick and reach your right heel and right foot up to the sky. Exhale, tap your knee to your nose as you round and contract. Two more like this. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, squeeze it in. Last one, inhale, reach it up. Exhale, pull it through. Now re-extend that right leg up towards the sky. You might choose to stay as you are, or you can add a quad stretch by reaching back with your left hand, grabbing a hold of your foot or your ankle, and see if you can push the foot into the palm in order to lift up a little bit more. Hug that right inner thigh down. And let's release, step the right foot forward in between your palms to the top of the mat. Make sure your knee is over your ankle, push into your feet as you lift on up. So rather than letting our hips go really far forward here, I want you to lift up a little more. Think of lengthening your tailbone down, contract through your abdominals and lift out of your lower back. Now, once you have the integrity through the pelvis, you can see if maybe there's a little bit more range of motion, but we're not collapsing. Extend out long through your arms, maybe shift your gaze up. And let's bring our fingertips down towards the mat. From here, you're going to straighten your right leg, flex the foot and see if you can wiggle that foot a little bit further forward. Bring both hands to the inside of that right leg. Flex into your foot, really push into that heel. You can bend a little bit into that right knee and see if you can send your hips back as you walk your hands away and forward. So over towards the top left corner. So just a different way of working into our hamstrings, different way of targeting into our hips. Keep lengthening and reaching out of your lower back. And walk your hands in. Tabletop pose on hands and knees. Second side, just one round of regular cat and cow. Inhale, drop your belly, lift the gaze, tailbone up. Exhale, round and contract. Now add the left leg. Inhale, reach your left foot up. Exhale, squeeze, pull it in. Two more like this. Inhale. And exhale. Last one, inhale, squeeze your glutes. Exhale, pull it in. Now re-extend and let's add the bind, stretching into the quads, deeper into the hips, reach your right hand back towards your left foot and see if you can really push the foot into the palm in order to lift it up. That's how you're going to get the stretch here. Little bit of a balancing act. 
Keep your gaze steady. Do not hold your breath. And let's release. Step that foot through for your low lunge. So knee is on top of your ankle. Push the feet into the earth. Draw your tailbone down. Pull your navel in and extend up nice and tall from here. So focusing mostly on stretching the front of your right hip deep into the psoas. Maybe looking up. And bring your hands down to the floor. Straighten your left leg and just bring that foot a couple inches forward as you flex so that only your heel is touching. Bring both hands to the inside of that leg more towards the top right corner of your mat and start to push your hips back and like a counter reach, you're moving your hands away from your tailbone, being stretched in all directions. You can absolutely bend a little bit into your left knee here, dig down into the heel and drag it back. So there's a big contraction happening through the hamstrings and lots and lots of length through your spine. And let's start to come back up. Walk your hands forward, tabletop pose on hands and knees. Let's find our first downward facing dog. Walk your hands a couple inches past your shoulders, tuck your toes under and lift your hips up and back. And you can paddle the feet a little bit here. Now go ahead and widen your feet to the edges of the mat and turn your heels in, toes out. Bend like a little frog pose here. You're going to bend as much as you can and start to walk your hands back just a couple inches, trying to push your hips down towards your heels and squeeze your glutes to press the knees open. Inhale back up, straighten the legs. We'll do that twice more. Exhale, bend a little deeper into that frog squat. Inhale, downward dog, last one, exhale, bend. And now walk your hands all the way to the back of the mat, Malasana, your yogi squat. So your heels are in, your toes are out, and you can use your elbows to push your knees open a little bit wider as you lift and lengthen up. So long through the spine, press it open a little bit more. And let's find our downward dog again. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Turn your feet in so they're parallel again, no longer turned out. Let's reach our right leg up to the sky. Bend your right knee. Open up your hip and see if you can push into your left heel even more. Really let that right leg lean over towards the left so you get a big stretch into your right hip and down into the quads. Into our pigeon pose, bring your right knee to your right wrist. Square off your pelvis so you're not leaning on one side or the other, and you might be up high, which is fine. Just hold the pose from here. If you're able to ground your hips, that's great, but it's not necessary. But try to make sure you're not on one hip more than on the other one. As you inhale, find length up here and then fold on down, walk your hands forward. So notice the theme here, just because we're working on our hips doesn't mean we want to shorten through our spine. So I'm always trying to create length through your spine from the tailbone all the way up to the crown of your head. And give yourself three to five deep belly breaths here in the pose. And let's start to lift back up, push your hands into the floor. We're coming back into that downward facing dog. So you can tuck the back toes under and carefully bring that right leg back and just feel the difference from one side to the next. Right away, we'll go to the other side. Left leg rises, go ahead and bend your left knee, open up that hip. So really let your weight shift to the right in this one. So you're trying to lean that left knee over towards the right, push into your right heel. 
into your pigeon pose, left knee to your left wrist. Square off your hips. So again, notice where your weight gets distributed. Don't worry so much about having that front foot to the top of the mat. You might have your heel pretty much closer in towards the inner groin. That's fine as well. The shin absolutely does not need to be parallel to the top of the mat. Find a little bit more lift, and then once you're here, crawl and pull out of your lower back to initiate the fold. You might notice that one side feels more challenging than the other. As much as possible, relax your shoulders and your upper back. Slow, steady breaths to help you manage the intensity. Never pushing ourselves so much that it feels like we have no choice but to hold our breath. And never going so far in a pose where you feel like you're fighting against the floor to hold yourself out. If that's the case, you know you're going too deep into a pose. And let's start to lift back up. Downward facing dog, step that left foot back. Push into both heels. And let's bring our knees down to the floor, tabletop pose. And we'll take a quad stretch from here. So as you lay back down, there's a few different ways that you can get into this one, but I find it easier to just bring my right leg out in front of me. And instead of sitting on your left heel, you wanna to sit to the inside of that leg. So both sit bones should be firmly planted down on the floor, and you want your shin to be parallel to the longer edges of your mat, both thigh bones parallel to each other. Try to get all toenails, all toes pressing into the floor, and you can lift up tuck your tailbone under before letting your hips come back down. And then maybe you're already feeling a nice stretch in the front of your quads and through the front of that hip. Or you might choose to lower down, maybe on your forearms, or maybe all the way down to the mat. I'm just gonna move myself forward a little bit here. And we're just gonna be about three to five breaths in the pose. So don't worry about how far you are or are not getting in this one. And if you feel pain in your knee at any point in this one, you know you've gone too far and you can ease on out. Just two more breaths here. And if you were laying down on your back, like what I'm doing here, start to ease on out. I like to push into the sole of the foot to find a nice lift. Now, before we go to the other side, go ahead and cross so that you're bringing your left knee, stacking it over the top of your right, and then find a forward fold from here. You really don't need to go very far in this one to feel the big stretch at the back of the leg. Definitely an intense pose. And coming all the way back up, one last pose while we're here. Go ahead and flex your left foot and stack it over the top of your right knee. And then you're gonna bend into that right knee for your square pose. So I'm trying to stack my left shin directly over the top of the right one. If your hips are not really allowing you to do this, instead, you're just going to bring your left shin in front a few inches. So either left shin on top or left shin in front. And you might choose to stay up here, maybe folding forward, or you can go even deeper by adding a twist, bringing your left elbow to the sole of your left foot, stacking that right hand on top and pushing into your palms to rotate a little bit further. So big stretch into that left hip especially, while also including a spinal rotation. Let's come all the way out and unwind. Stretch your legs out in front of you. Give them a little shake. 
and we'll find that reclined quad stretch, reclined hero pose on the other side. Bend your right knee. Try to get the top of that foot flat and anchored into the floor. You can lift and tuck your tailbone under a little bit to really get that going through the front of your hip. And then maybe stay up tall, come down on your forearms, any variation that feels the best to you. Try not to let your right knee lift off the mat here. You want to keep that shin grounded. And you're lengthening your tailbone, flattening out your lower back so that you can really isolate and target the front of your hip and target your quads rather than just getting your low back to hyperextend. And let's start to rise on up. We'll be setting ourselves up for half shoelace pose. So this time you're going to try and stack your right knee over the left one with the toes pointing back. And maybe you stay up here if you're already feeling it, or you can try to fold on forward. And lifting up into your square pose. Right ankle is over your left knee. And you can bend into that knee. So stack your right shin directly over the top of your left shin or slightly staggered in front, whichever works for you. Either folding down straight forward or adding your twist, right elbow to the sole of that right foot. One palm over the other and try to lift and then twist. So remember, we're focusing on length through the spine, even if we're adding a rotation. Press your shoulders away from your ears. And coming on out, let's release. Let's find downward dog from here. Cross at your ankles, plant your palms and step the feet back. And just notice if this feels maybe a little bit easier second time around. Let's reach our right leg up towards the sky and you're gonna step the right foot to the outer edge of your right palm. So both hands are to the inside of that front leg. We're gonna try to keep that back knee lifted you might choose to stay up on your palms, or if you'd like, you can come down on your forearms. Try not to roll to the outer edge of your uh, right foot. Really push down into your big toe and squeeze through the midline. Just three breaths here. Like gravity, pull your hips lower to the floor. And now go ahead and drop the back knee to the mat. If you'd like, you can let yourself roll to the outer edge of that right foot, either hanging out here or adding your quad stretch. Right hand reaching to the back of the mat, holding onto your left foot as you pull it in. So big stretch here. Very carefully release the hold of that back foot. Bring your hands back in front of you. Downward facing dog as delicately as you can. Curling tailbone up to the sky. And second side, left leg rises. Bring your left knee, or sorry, your left foot to the outer edge of your left hand. Keep that back knee lifted off of the floor. And really try to push into that big toe, and you might stay up on your hands or you can always come down on your forearms. 
So you're trying to almost hug your left knee to your left shoulder. Slow, steady breaths as you melt your hips. And bring that right knee down. And maybe roll to the outer edge of your left foot. You might choose to stay here or you add your quad stretch, reaching back with your left hand to pull that left heel in, or sorry, that right heel in. So really important here is I'm not lifting my hips up to meet my back foot. I'm trying to keep my hips really low and instead pulling the foot in towards me. This will really change the sensation of the pose. And very carefully release the hold of that back foot. Let's find our last downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. And see if you can really push back into your heels and reach your chest towards your thighs. And before we close, let's find our wide like a child's pose. So as you lower your knees down, you can widen your knees and bring your big toes together to touch. Think of pressing your hips back towards your heels. And just like what we've been doing throughout practice, really lift and lengthen out of your lower back as you push your hips down. See if you can shrug your shoulders away from your ears. I'm taking some cleansing breaths here. Really allow for the full weight of your pelvis to surrender and soften down. If it feels like too much, if there's pain, just bring your knees closer in towards one another. Taking three more breaths here. And let's start to walk the hands in, lifting up. And come to take a seat in any way that is comfortable for your hips and for your lower back. Sitting up tall as you shrug your shoulders down and away from your ears, you can join your palms together at the front of your heart. And just feel into the effects of your practice. Really paying close attention to any sensations still lingering around your hips, pelvis, low back, down into your quads and hamstrings fully acknowledging all of the work that you've done. And also noticing how morning yoga practices can affect your emotional well-being, the mental chatter and thoughts. giving yourself this opportunity to set the tone for your day. Let's close with the chant of Om. Inhale to chant, big breath in. Om. Namaste. Thank you so much, yogis, for doing this hip opening morning practice with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do leave me a comment below to let me know how this went for you. And I hope that you subscribe to my channel. You can just click that red subscribe button that you would see down below. It's a great way to support free yoga on the internet. If you'd like to stay a little bit longer, I would follow this class up with this meditation right here. Thank you again so much and hopefully you will join me tomorrow morning for another practice. Namaste.